Today I'll be making a Mii Fighter in my favorite game, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So what you do is you click on Mii Fighter, you mash A, and, and then your fucking switch crashes. You asked, so I'm here to deliver. So before I start, there are some things I need to address. In order to use the training mode mod pack, you need a switch running custom firmware. If you already have custom firmware, go ahead and skip to this point in the video and I'll show you how to install the mod. But unfortunately, not every switch is hackable and I have two examples right here. Right here we have a launch edition switch that I recently purchased from a friend. And here we have my personal switch that I bought on Black Friday in the year 2018. This switch is hackable. This switch is not. And that is because when Nintendo caught wind that people were loading custom firmware on their switches, they patched out the ability to load outside payloads onto a switch that has been forced into recovery mode. So how do we know if your switch is hackable? Well, what I want you to do is look up a website called ismyswitchpatch.com. From right there, you will enter your console serial number and it'll tell you if your switch is patched or not. If you don't know where your serial number is, there's a couple ways to learn. Right where my finger is covering under your console, that's where your serial number is. You can also find it in the system settings, or you can check the bottom of these boxes if you decide to actually keep those boxes, but not everyone's a hoarder like me. Now, there will be some of you where the website itself can't even determine if your Switch is hackable or not. It's in the area where it's really hard to tell, and you won't know unless you try. An example of this is my own roommate's Nintendo Switch, his is the Smash Ultimate version, and when I looked up its serial number, it was in the area where the website just wasn't really sure if it was hackable or not. And while it won't cost him a dime to find out because I have all the tools here, it will cost you because you need to go out of your way to get some tools. So first and foremost, and all that is is some fancy little paper clip that's been fitted into some 3D printed plastic, which is right here. What this does is it shorts out certain pins on your right Joy-Con rail so that your Switch will boot into recovery mode. And from there, you would be able to load payloads. So if you're okay with spending about $5 just to find out if your possible hackable Switch is hackable, then go ahead. If not, then I suppose you could just save up and buy an old Switch. For this video, I'll be working on one of my friend's Switches. And I'll be doing it a little bit different the way I did mine because, as you'll find out soon enough, I did not have an extra SD card big enough for this, and his Switch didn't have an SD card at all. So you're going to need some tools, and the links to everything I discussed in this video will be in the description below. Of course, I recovered the RCM jig. You're also going to need an SD card. I recommend a minimum of 64 gigabytes because if you're like Ryan, and this is your only Switch, and you want to mod it, you're going to have to install Amunand, and that's going to require around 32 gigabytes because it's pretty much a separate system memory that's loaded all from the SD card. And that's not including backing up your own NAND in case something happens to it. They're pretty cheap these days, and I, I personally have a 128 gigabyte SD card, and I will upgrade to an even higher one. But for the purpose of this video, and because we're both broke, I will be using one of my spare SD cards. It's a 16 gigabyte. And because of that, I'm going to have to just install a custom firmware on his system NAND, which can bring risk. But that's okay, Ryan. Uh, if you're watching this video, just follow what I'm doing and you'll, you'll be golden, my guy. Another thing you'll need is a USB Type-C cable. And you're going to need some way to be able to connect your micro SD card to your computer. I have this little shitty micro SD card adapter that I got with my one of my phones back in the day. It's like $5.00. Not the best, but it's cheap and it gets the job done. I recommend getting a multi-card reader because it can read several cards of different shapes and sizes and it's better in the long run. But if you're on a budget, there's nothing wrong with picking this one. And now we get on to the file prepping. In the description below will be a link that I got from someone else. It's full of the bare bones files you'll need. I also recommend downloading the Homebrew Store app. And when you do download it, go ahead and drop it into a folder labeled switch that you can find on the root of your SD card. And that's in case you don't feel like manually installing things afterwards, you can just download them straight off the homebrew store. If for some reason the link is down, it happens from time to time, uh, you can go ahead and click the written guide that I left down in the description. And these types of guides are the way I usually mod my consoles. I just understand that some people would prefer to watch someone else do it themselves on camera. But by all means, if you feel lost or whatever, all that guide. You're only really here to figure out how to use the Smash Road mod pack after all. 
and this is just the prerequisites. Now you need to prep your micro SD card. Before you format your SD card though, I need to tell you to back up any important files you have. What I'm using here is already a blank SD card, so I have nothing to lose. So here's something I wish somebody told me. The Nintendo Switch is capable of reading FAT32 and XFAT format SD cards. However, it cries if you're not using a FAT32. So just format it into a FAT32. If you're handling files that are bigger than four gigabytes, which if you don't know, FAT32 just doesn't like handling, just split up the file into different sizes and then throw them all in there. And then you can combine the whole thing in your Switch. So now with that out of the way, let's get onto the computer. So here we have my SD card and here is the file that I told you guys to download. Now what I want you to do is drag the files from the SD card folder into the root of the SD card of your Switch. If you don't know what that means, it's literally what you see when you open up your SD card. That is the root. Think of it like a tree. Everything branches off from you. Now if that's done, you can inject your SD card and then you can place it inside your Switch. Now I want you to locate the PC folder. Locate the Tegra RCM GUI. And now I want you to run Tegra RCM GUI. I personally have already done this. So I'm just going to launch the shortcut on my computer. It'll bring up this program here. And it'll detect if your switch is in RCM. We haven't even connected our switch. But for the record, when you see that turn green and says RCM mode, that's how you know. So, we're going to move our right Joy-Con, get our RCM jig, place it down the right Joy-Con rail, and some people just see hold tap it for a second. Um, I'm holding it because I don't want to mistime it. What you do is you hold the volume up button right here, you uh, tap that power button, and if your switch, your switch is on by the way, it's just you can't tell. If you turn it on and you see the logo, you messed up, it's booting normally. But trust me, it's in RCM mode now. Let me just connect our switch to the desktop now, and I'll move back onto the computer. There we go. As you can see, it says RCM OK. Also, at this point, if for whatever reason that your switch isn't detected and Tiger RCM GUI asks you to install some drivers, go ahead and let it it usually does it as soon as you launch it or as soon as you connect a switch you just go to settings and hit install driver now let's go back to the payload so we hit this little button here to locate our payload i have a couple that i look for myself if i remember correctly i'm pretty sure this is the one that told me if my switch was hackable or not i didn't have to do it but i just remember it bringing a qr code to my screen but let's not do that right now so what we want is we want to click on the hackity bin click ok and then you're going to click inject payload and while I do that I actually want to bring the switch back to this or yeah, actually this cable is even long enough so let's click inject payload and your switch will turn on and it'll say Hackety IRL or something like that and right here it'll say the payload successfully injected so we can disconnect our switch and we can actually take off the <laughs> RCM jig we don't need that anymore and let's switch back on to the camera where the fuck is my mouse? <laughs> Now, if you follow my directions and you had a big enough SD card, I want you to go to your tools and click backup MMC and then go ahead and click boot zero and boot one and then also click the raw image. That's a backup of your NAND, which is pretty much what your switch, like your actual switch itself, the inside of it is like. And that's in case anything bad happens. Not that it will. It's never happened to me on any of my consoles, but it's better to have a backup you don't need than a backup you don't have. Oh, and you can, when you're done with that, you can just leave it on your computer for safe storing or put it on a cloud storage or whatever. And then this next part where it says MUMMC, what it is, it's MU NAND. I mentioned it before. NAND is just a system memory, and this will be an emulated system memory that is run off of your SD card. So let's say the reason. So the reason why I even bring this up is because if you want to play online and not get hit by Nintendo ninjas, you want to run the mods on your MU NAND, your, or your MU MMC, as this is called. It's the same thing, just different name for whatever reason. When you want to play online, you can go ahead and boot into your normal SysNAND. But for this example, right here, for Ryan's Switch, 
I don't have a big enough SD card, so I don't have to do that, at least not yet. But basically, Ryan, you would hit Amunand, create Amunand, and there you go. So here you hit launch and then hit custom firmware. And despite not having Amunand on here, it's still letting me launch it through there, which is neat. Can see what that's all about. And if you want to know if you did it right, what you can do is you can go to your settings. Let's see. And go all the way down to system. And in your system version, I don't know if you can see here, there will be an M and AMS right next to the firmware number. That stands for atmosphere. That's the custom firmware we are loading. And an S at the very end. And that's how you know you are running custom firmware. However, if you did it how I did, and that so that you're not actually booted onto your system NAN, because as you can see, all of Ryan's files and stuff is still there. That's so strange, right? Well, you might find that yours are not there. In fact, it might look like a whole new system entirely. That's not the case for my Switch, because, you know, I have stuff on here and I'm using a custom theme. It's Mithra, because they didn't have a pirate theme. And obviously, I have way more games than just these two. And as I said before, it's it's an emulated NAND. It's running purely off your SD card. So anything you do on there will not impact what you do on your original NAND. So Ryan, if you see it's empty, don't freak out. So now we're at the point in the video where we go about loading the training mode mod pack. This is what your Switch should look like, you know, minus the theme. It should look like a brand new Switch. And if you're running it on SysNAND like I'm doing for Ryan, so the time being, it's going to look like your, how your Switch normally looks like. It should be entirely new white theme and everything like if i turned off my, my mithra theme it would be all white so as mentioned before because this is running on an emulated nand that means all your save file your dlc all that not accessible but you kind of need that in order to you know lab so what can you do there's actually some apps on the homebrew store that were meant for that they back up data you back up the data and then you can go ahead and install it onto your <laughs> Emunan. Of course, you got to go to your SysNan to go grab it, and that's perfectly fine. However, if you're going to do that, here's something nobody told me. So what you want to do, so what you want to do is you want to go to your internet settings and then click on DNS settings, switch them to manual. We will connect you to a entirely separate DNS so that you can block out all Nintendo servers, so that your Switch itself doesn't snitch to Nintendo that you're on custom firmware. Oh, this is even more risky to have when you're running on your SysNAN, but even on your AmiNAN, you're connected to the internet because you got to do that. If you're connected to the homebrew store, you want to make sure that you are using a different primary DNS and secondary NES. The link to those are in the description below. It is dependent on your region, so keep that in mind. There's different DNSs for those regions. So I'm going to go ahead and type it on Ryan's switch, and I'll meet back with you. So now that we have the DNS set up, uh, if you want to load into your homebrew menu, and you're doing the emulated, uh, the emunand. All you gotta do is tap the albums button, and there you go. You're there. If you're doing this on SysNan, I think I think it's just SysNan. Let's let's try. Oh, never mind. You don't have to hold R. That's cool. You're already there. If you notice here, it says you can go back to um, Hackety. I don't have any apps here. I forgot to put in the app store, but I do have the app store right here on my other Switch. And you would go there and look up something called Checkpoint. So you can install, like, you know, you can install save data that you've extracted elsewhere. If you're going to be dumping anything, use the NX dump tool and dump everything as an NSP into smaller files. That way you can actually install them and write them on your SD card. And those will be all you need. You can go ahead and grab your save data your DLC that you paid and worked for. This is all the stuff that you already own, and I hope that you use this information responsibly. Of course, I'm saying this to avoid legal troubles. So once you have that all set up, what we can do is we want to go back to the computer. I'm gonna send this back to the payload because once you're here, you can actually take out your SD card and it doesn't matter at all. It's really neat. In fact, I actually almost never turn off my switch because I'm too lazy to keep doing this whole process of putting it in RCM mode and blah, 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 blah. So I'm gonna go back on the computer and I'll show you what to do. You're actually gonna get a little upset how easy it is. 
So here we are back on the computer. Uh, down a link below, I already linked where the Chainwood mod pack is, but in case you're wondering, it's on Jugia's GitHub page. You would just look it up, click on releases, and then touch right here. That's all you need to know. And then, just highlight everything inside that zip file. Hopefully my computer doesn't crash while I'm doing this, because I'm trying to record all this and that. And then just drag and drop onto the root of your SD card, and that's it, it's installed. It's really that easy. Drag and drop. Okay. Oh shit, what happened? Okay, yeah, it had to reboot. Also, if you don't feel like using that RCM jig anymore, I don't want to. Um, but also, sometimes I, I don't want to catch attention by turning on my switch and then people see it's like that. But it's up to you what you can do. Tools. Get tools. You can auto RCM and then turn that on. Launch back into custom firmware. And from there, it's easy as one, two, three. It's already installed. You can't turn them off. If you want to turn them off, you're going to have to delete the .l files that are inside salty SD. Or what I did, because for some reason that didn't work the first time I tried it, just delete everything related to that. Here's the thing with mine. I didn't know about the save extraction and all that. So what I did is I used cheat codes to unlock characters on mine because I wasn't about to sit down and unlock those characters again. That took like half a day when I first got the game. So that means I didn't do everything in this game. And the first time I tried to actually go into Smash, the game uh, crashed. So whenever I'd boot into Smash, before I had anything done on the save, it would actually run into an error. I want to show you that right now. In fact, I'll have this, I'll have this set to Smash just to show it doesn't crash on here because Brian already has you know, gameplay data on this. I'm gonna head over to Games and More and uh, try to create a. Okay, so I'll have Ryan, Ryan switch boot into Smash. And by then, if you don't remember, a tutorial screen would have greeted you about that, and the game would have crashed. This is fine. Uh, let's see what happens when I, tr I try to create a me. And it's a me thing because I, before I dumped this mod back in, I didn't use this menu. So, we are... <laughs> see, we get this, this menu about the me's and all that, right? Right? And then that happens. Uh, my switch crashed. So, if you run into that issue for whatever reason, because you haven't done anything, you, you've entered a part of the game, that is sending you tutorials and just clear all that before you use these mods. Because when it happened to me, I, I didn't know what the hell was going on. I was asking people if they didn't know what was going on. And it's probably because they're launching this thing on their Sysman instead of Emmy Man. So that's something I want you guys to know because nobody told me. And that's all you have to do in this mod pack. I'll even put some gameplay for right now if you want to see it in action. All you really gotta do is hold the home button and then you can mess with these settings. Uh, keep in mind, if you ever stream this, this will display your system information, like your IP address, so uh, make sure that that is to collapse down. So thank you guys for watching. I'm just going to put a little clip of me doing something with Wolf with the DI settings here. If you found this video useful, please give it a like. Maybe subscribe if you want to see anything else from me in the future. And if you have any ideas for what you want to see next, go ahead and comment below in the comment section. I'll see you all next time.